Hello everyone, how are you all? I hope you all are fine. This is your chemistry lecture, chemistry lecture of grade 9 and I am your chemistry teacher Aparna Pandey from Arvind Progressive School, Lavachor. So student, as you all know that we have completed our chapter number 1. So now it's time to start the new chapter that is chapter number 2 and its name is is matter around a sphere. The chapter that we are going to start today, it is new chapter, chapter number 2 and its name is, is matter around a sphere. So, better by the name of the chapter only, you can analyze here that this chapter is actually asking us about the purity of the matter. That whether the matter which we have, is it pure? or not means in this chapter we are going to study about the purity of the matter or how we will come to know that whether the given matter is pure or not or in how many ways the matter can exist in terms of the purity right so let's start this chapter see student related to matter you all know so many things like that matter exists in three forms. Matter is made up of the molecules. This is all I have told you in previous videos. And about the properties of particular type of matter you also know that. Okay. So now today we are going to talk that how do we come to know about the purity of the matter. So students when we say matter what we see here that matter exist in the three forms what are these solid liquid and gas this you all know that matter exists in three forms solid liquid and gas now what how we will come to know that the given matter is pure or not now see when i am saying about the pure matter it means that there is also a type of matter in which is not pure, right? So, beta, see it is like that when you go to the market and you bring some product to your home, then what do you see on the packed, packed item that whether it is written that it is pure or not? Suppose you are bringing honey at your home. So, what you used to see the tag of 100% pure, right? Similarly, you, when you buy something, mostly these days all are uh, trying to buy the organic items. Why do they want to buy the organic items? Because organic items are pure. So, what do you mean by this word pure? So, beta, in terms of the general language, purity means something other. But when we talk in terms of chemistry, pure Substance means the substance which is formed of particular type of matter. Which is formed of single type of matter that is called pure substance. When we talk in chemistry then in terms of chemistry when we say that this matter is pure means that this particular matter has the single type of the component. So let's see what it is. Now when I am saying pure, it means that there must be a impure something. So that is not impure, actually it is a mixture. So what we are going to study in this chapter is that matter can exist in two forms. Either it can be in the pure uh, form or it is available in mixture form. So let's see what it is. I am saying matter, huh? not metal. Don't get confused, it is matter. So what I told you that matter exist in two forms. One is the pure and the another one we can say it is mixture. Okay. One is pure and the another one is mixture. M-I-X-T-U-R-E mixture. So when we talk about the pure, when we talk about the pure matter or pure substance, what I told you in terms of chemistry, when the substance constitute a particular type of matter, then it is called pure. So, from here we come to know that it can be of two types. It, it means the pure matter can exist in two forms. What are these? 
either in the form of an element e l e m e n t or in a form of a compound c o m p o u n d compound okay so when we talk about the pure substance or the pure matter then it is present either in a element form or in a compound now what is element element is a substance which is formed of a particular type of the matter and it cannot be broken down into much simpler form okay element is the substance which contains the particular type of the matter only a single form of a matter and which cannot be break down further means it doesn't matter that how many small piece of element you are picking up it is the particular element only the properties will not change you cannot uh, further break that particular element and no other simpler form can be obtained when we talk about the element so the pure matter is exists in the form of the element for example element like you can see element like we have uh, we can say uh, copper is a element okay then we can say sodium is a element potassium is a element we can say oxygen is a element hydrogen is a element what is what are these Uh, these are the elements which constitute of particular matter okay now another thing we have compound now what is this compound and we know that compound formed by the mixing of the two or more different types of uh, elements then how we can say that compound is pure because when i said that pure substance is the substance where the single type of the matter is there then why i am saying that compound is also a pure so see beta compounds are formed by mixing two um, or more than two different elements okay and they form a particular compound and they are pure now why they are pure because we cannot change the constituent of the compound by physical methods means the compound which is formed by the combination of the two or more elements it cannot be break down into the its simpler form by the physical methods for breaking the compound we need some special chemical efforts and the whenever we pick the compound it is the uniform composition is everywhere for example we don't no need to worry i'm explaining you for example we have water h2o it is a compound for example we have methane ch4 it is a compound now see student from wherever you pick the water molecules the composition is always h2 and o the composition is always h2 and o so that's why it is pure because composition is always remain same and we cannot break the h2 in h2 and oh by physical methods for breaking the h2 on its uh, constituents we have to provide some special chemical efforts so that's why we say that compounds are also pure because they have the uniform constituent similarly when ch4 is there this is methane so ch4 is also a compound now you can see that whenever wherever you will see methane it is always ch4 only so the uh, composition is uniformed here okay so ch4 is always ch4 now if the number of hydrogen or the number of carbon will increase then definitely the name will change it will not remain methane then the properties will also change so an element is a substance that cannot be broken down into any other substance every element is made up of its own type of atom 
This is why the chemical elements are all very different from each other. An element is a material that consists of a single type of atom. So students, I hope now that what are elements is clear to you. Let's see what are compounds. So the chemical bonds link elements together to form more complex molecules called compounds. A compound consists of two or more type of elements held together by covalent or ionic bonds. It consists of a fixed ratio of chemically bonded atoms. It has unique properties that are different from the properties of its individual elements means the property of the compounds are different from individual element so from here we come to know that the matter when it exists in pure substance that it can be further divided into two types that is elements and compounds really we have mixture now so when we talk about the mixture it exists in two forms what are these? So we can see here that mixture exists in homogeneous form H-O-M-O-G-E-N-O-U-S homogeneous and it can be heterogeneous H-E-T-E-R-O-G-E-N-O-U-S heterogeneous. So students what we come to know that we come to know that mixture exists in the two forms homogeneous mixture and heterogeneous mixture. Now, what do you mean by homogeneous mixture? Homo means similar. So, when we mix the two items or more than two items and their composition is uniform and their composition is uniform then they are called homogeneous mixture for example salt and water mixing of salt and water is a homogeneous mixture similarly when we mix sugar and water so it is also the example of homogeneous mixture because it in that the composition is uniform composition is uniform means you cannot see the two different particles by the naked eyes or even with the help of the microscope. It is quite tough to distinguish between the particles of the salt as well as the particle of the water. Similarly, sugar and water the same thing is there. Means, what we say homogeneous mixtures are the mixtures where the complete dissolving, the substance is dissolving completely and we cannot differentiate between the solute and the solvent that is present in solution. And we cannot see that with the naked eyes even by using the compound microscope, right? Similarly, when we talk about the heterogeneous mixture, so heterogeneous mixture is a type of mixture where when we mix the two uh, when we mix the two items then there is form a type of a layer which distinguish uh, which distinguished the one from the another okay the heterogeneous hetero means different so the heterogeneous mixture is a mixture in which the two components that we have mixed are easily differentiated and we, it is visible with our naked eyes as well as with the help of the microscope also. For example, when you are mixing um, salt and sand, so the particles are completely different, they are very easily visible. When you are, the best example of heterogeneous mixture is mixing of oil and water. So when you mix oil and water, you have seen that the, their water is there in the downside and the oil is on the upper side and there is a distinguished layer between them. Means you can see very clearly that up to which level water is there and from where oil is there. So what is this? This type of mixture is called heterogeneous mixture. Here we can differentiate the layer. Here we can see the particles of the two components very clearly. So 
in chemistry a mixture is a material made up of two or more different substances which are not chemically combined a mixture is the physical combination of two or more substances in which the identities are retained and are mixed in the form of solutions suspensions and colloids okay students so till now what we come to know that matter can exist in pure form as well as in the mixture form when we talk about the pure form of the matter then we uh, have seen that it exists in the element form as well as in the compound form now when we talk about the elements now so beta related to elements we must know that when we talk about the elements we must know that elements can further be divided into three forms elements can further be divided into three forms and what are these these are metals non metals and metalloids what are these metals metals then non metals then metalloids metalloids okay so students what we have seen here now that when we talk about the elements the elements can further divided into three forms metals non metals and metalloids now what are metals okay so so when we talk about the metals we can say that metals are solid at room temperature except mercury which is liquid okay first thing second thing related to metals we can say that metals are malleable metals are malleable malleable means we can uh we can put the hammer on the metals and we can change them in a sheets form as you have seen the aluminium foil at your home in which you uh, pack your food but it is aluminium is actually a metal but we can as it is a metal so it has a property of malleability so it is it for our convenience we have Uh, break down that mat. We have changed that metal into a sheet form. So metals are malleable. First property, second property. First, I told you metals are solid except mercury, which exists uh, in a form of a liquid at room temperature. Second thing is that metals are malleable. They can be changed into the sheets. then we say that metals are ductile metals are ductile means that we can turn the metals in a form of a wire metals are ductile means we can change the metals in a form of a wire i hope that you all have seen the copper wire so what is copper copper is actually a metal but it can be changed into the wire similarly you have seen other wire also so sometimes you have also seen that some are wearing a wire of a gold in the ear what it is gold is also a metal so it can also be changed in the form of a wire so when we change the metal in the form of a wire then it is called ductile so ductility is also the property of metals then we say that metals are sonorous metals are sonorous sonorous means they create sound metals are sonorous whenever you put something on metal or whenever you throw metal anywhere you will find that there is a particular type of a sound so that's why we say that metals are sonorous similarly we say that metals are lustrous lustrous means that metals have specific type of shine on them okay metals have the specific type of shine on them so that's why they are called lustrous metals are shining in nature then we say that related to metals that metals are good 
कंडक्टर ऑफ हीट एंड इलेक्ट्रिसिटी मेटल्स आर गुड कंडक्टर ऑफ द हीट एंड इलेक्ट्रिसिटी दैट्स वाई द यूटेंसिल दैट यू आर यूजिंग एट योर होम आर मेड अप ऑफ मेटल्स बिकॉज दे आर good conductors of heat and electricity similarly the wire that we are using they are also made up of metal because they are good conductor of electricity then uh, another property we can say related to metals that yes metal lose electrons metals lose electrons and they have positive charge they form cation this i have told you earlier also that metals have a property of losing electrons and after losing electrons they get a positive charge and they are called cations so these all are the properties related to metals then when we talk about the non metals the so non metals are usually few are solid most are gases and one is only liquid okay when we talk about the non metals we say that metals are usually in non metals are usually in a gaseous form like hydrogen oxygen okay chlorine fluorine these all are non metals but few are solid like carbon iodine sulfur these all comes under the category of non metals but they are in solid form and only the one non metal which exist as a liquid in a room temperature that is bromine that is bromine so students uh, the non metals has the properties opposite to the metals means we cannot uh, change non metals into a sheet form we cannot change non metals into a wire they are non sonorous means they do not have any type of sound as well as they are non luscious okay uh, except id then uh, we say that yes uh, when we talk about the non metals they are bad conductor of heat and electricity they are bad conductor of heat and electricity now similarly the third type of element that exist in nature are called metalloids the third type of elements that exist in nature are called metalloids now what are these metalloids so beta the elements which constitute the property of both metals as well as non metals so the elements which constitute the property of both metals as well as non metals they are called metalloids they are called metalloids they have the intermediate properties they have the intermediate properties of metals as well as non metals for example boron boron it comes under the category of the metalloids similarly we have silicon silicon you have i hope that you all have heard this word silicon the so silicon is actually a metalloid similarly germanium is there germanium is also an example of metalloid okay so students here what we have seen that the pure metal exist in the form of a element or in the form of a compound and when we talk about the element then we have seen seen that elements can be further distinguished distinguished into the three types and these are metals non metals metalloids when we talk about the metals they are usually uh, solid except the mercury which exist in a liquid form at room temperature then related to non metals i told you that they exist in a form of a gas and solid except the bromine which exists as a liquid at a room temperature and then we have metalloids which has the properties of both solids as well as liquids right now and i have told you the properties of metals as well as non metals similarly as i told you metals lose the electron so non metals gain the electron okay they have the negative charge they form an ion okay so students 
in today's class here we have discussed that how we can further distribute the matter matter can be distributed in a pure form or in a mixture now when we talk about the mixture i have told you that it is the mixture can exist in two forms either a homogeneous mixture or a heterogeneous mixture homogeneous mixture has uniform composition and the heterogeneous mixture has non uniform composition now the example of homogeneous composition is solutions so the solutions that are formed they comes under the category of the homogeneous mixture jis cheez ka bhi aap solution bana dete hain solution kab banta hai when the solute get dissolved completely in the solvent then solution is formed so there is a uniform composition so when uniform composition is formed that is called solution and when uniform when there is a non uniform composition when there is a non uniform composition then further two type of categories we have one is suspension s u s p e n s i o n suspension and another one is colloidal c o l l o i d a l colloidal so now the further then what is solution and what is suspension in colloidal this we are going to discuss in our another video so students i hope that today's video will help you in understanding that how matter exists in pure form and what type of mixtures we have how many types of elements we have and what are their properties i hope you all will like this video thank you and have a nice day ahead